Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Emma. And in this series, I am taking you guys along with me as I learn how to sew off the internet. In this episode, I am tackling dress pants, which is actually a garment that I've really wanted to make even before starting sewing. And because this is a more structured piece of clothing that requires more crisp lines to look presentable, I have opted for a printable pattern with a video tutorial. And this way I'd have higher chances of actually making something that looks presentable, something I'd actually wanna wear, and also learn a whole bunch of new skill sets along the way, such as making pleats for the first time, sewing a zipper and fly, hemming, as well as using usable usable, fusible interfacing. Let's get started. First things first, gotta go get some fabric. Of course, I hit up my local vendor and she helps me pick out some fabrics. I was only gonna go for plaid, but she insisted I picked at least one block color, which is this lovely turquoise. When I tell vendors that I'm just starting out in sewing, they usually don't whip out their best fabrics, but they'll probably let me choose from a pile of fabric that's a little easier to work with and won't hurt the back too much if I do mess up. I got this pattern printed and cut everything out. This pattern is from Dressmaking Amore, which comes with clear instructions in a PDF format, as well as a follow along video tutorial, which I found to be very helpful as I am a visual and auditory learner. This pattern also called for fusible interfacing. And so I went and picked that up and I was sold not one, but two types of fusible interfacing. And I say I was sold because I was under the impression that there was only one type of universal fusible interfacing all over the world. And boy, was I wrong. So what is interfacing? Interfacing is an extra layer of material that you add to any part of your project that needs more stiffness or structure. Usually these are parts that have to bear more weight, such as the waistband, as it's holding up your entire garment, pocket opening, as it has to hold its shape even when you put really heavy things into it, or to reinforce high stress areas, such as the zipper fly. There are a couple of things to keep in mind when choosing interfacing. First is how you install it. You can find sew on interfacing, which basically you sew it on as an extra layer of fabric or iron on, AKA fusible interfacing. And when you iron it onto your project, the beads of glue on the back of the interfacing will melt and adhere itself to the project. This option is more beginner friendly. Your interfacing may come as woven, non-woven or knit fabric. With woven interfacing, just like any other fabric, you wanna be mindful of the grain line and cut it in the same direction that you would your project so your end product drapes correctly. Non-woven interfacing is generally cheaper. Mine is just glue beads on the back of some felt and it doesn't really matter which direction you cut it in. In terms of weight, interfacing comes in light, medium, and heavy. The rule of thumb is that your interfacing must be of equal weight or lighter than your fabric as to not affect the drape and overall shape of your project. Let's take these pockets for example. For this one, I used a lighter weight interfacing so the pocket still looks natural and flows the way it's supposed to. However, for this one, I used this interfacing that was heavier than the flowy fabric of the project. So you can kind of see the edge of the interfacing peeking through, which is not what we want. Make sure you have your glue side down on the fabric. Instead of dragging your iron around, you just want to hold it in place for a couple seconds Lift it and move to the next patch as to not drag the glue beads around too much and thus dragging the interfacing along with it. You can fuse it lightly at first, trim the edges before giving it a real secure fusing. 
If you happen to flip your interfacing wrong side up like I did and melt glue or synthetic fabric off onto your iron, have no fear as all you have to do is to turn your iron on high heat so the glue or fabric stays melted and before it burns or hardens, wipe it really hard on some tissue or a whole toilet roll uh, to prevent your hands from burning. If you have some dryer sheets laying around, I heard wiping your iron on those works wonders as well. With hemming a blind hem, which is where you don't see your stitches from the front, especially with a slippery fabric, to avoid it slipping around and getting wonky, you could always add some extra pins to hold it in place, even if it is just one layer of fabric. So I have some fabric that my dad found that used to be my grandma's. So this is my grandma and she actually passed a couple years ago. But when she was alive, she was a very talented knitter and hand sewist. Although I have never seen her touch like a, a sewing machine before, I bet she could do that too. It's just that I haven't seen it. So what we have is this plaid which um, surprisingly I have just enough for a pair of pants, which is one and a half meters by two meters. So we already know the destiny of this fabric. And I also have this fabric, which I think is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, some sort of greenish felt, this pine greenish felt. I'm not sure if it shows on camera, but I'm not quite sure what I should do with it. Especially with the climate in Vietnam, it's like always very hot and damp. So I'm not sure if I feel like wearing felt on my body as like a winter garment. So if you guys have any suggestions on what I should do with this, please let me know in the comments below because I really am stumped here. It's a little musty, so off to the wash it goes. The initial idea I had for this video was actually to make a pattern hack where I could derive multiple different garments from this one initial pattern. From this pair of straight-legged pants, I could make wide-legged pants, cuffed pants, fitted pants, bell bottoms, you name it, and then do all of this again, but with a pair of shorts. I thought as long as I could preserve the integrity of the waistband as well as the zipper fly, I could manipulate the silhouette in any way that I wanted. And technically, I could, if I were equipped with the skill sets to do so, which I have yet to develop. I had tried to clone my favorite pair of shorts, I had copied the waist and the zipper for the pattern, and traced the silhouette of my shorts, and the math was mathing. All my edges lined up, but somehow the silhouette still looked kind of off. So my takeaway is, for now, with garments that need to look more proportional and crisp. I will probably stick to professional patterns and tutorials as a way to train my eyes for proportion as well as hone my skill sets to actually bring those patterns to life. Because at the end of the day, I find myself not really reaching for garments that either don't look good or fit well. And for garments that do have a little bit more leeway like skirts, um, bags, pajama sets and whatnot, I'll probably still draw up my own patterns. One day, I do want to enroll in a proper pattern making course though, so if you guys have any tips or any recommendations for online pattern making courses that I could take, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Guys, check out what my mom crocheted for me. This very cute pumpkin pin cushion thing. All I need to do is make an elastic so I can put it around my waist. Oh, so I could put it around my, what do you call this? My wrist. And I could just put my pins like this when I'm sewing. And then if I need a pin, pull it out. Put it into my fabric.
I am very satisfied with the outcome and I now have four good old pair of pants in rotation. Thank you Dressmaking Amore for making these projects less intimidating and more exciting with your patterns and instructions. And of course, thank you you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!